Hi there, it's uh, Jeff Winehouse uh, coming to you live on tape, and uh, today is January 23rd, 2011, 2011, uh, the year to seek more of heaven. Yes, yeah, so very soon, soon, very soon, we're going to see the king. Folks, the question I have for you is, are you ready? I encourage you to get ready by, first of all, uh, reading the Bible. Read your King James Version of the Bible, and... Um, Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you already fill. You already have a measure of the Holy Spirit. You can increase that measure by uh, asking Him and getting baptized in Jesus' name. Uh, today I'm reading out of Louise Latham's books. Uh, the Reverend Louise Latham is the pastor down to Praise Fellowship, <coughs> Uncompromised Word Church. And we're located at 1200 North Fifth Street in DeSoto, Missouri. We have service every Sunday at 2 p.m. We encourage you to come on down and praise the Lord with us. Today I'm reading the book of Joshua. Uh, you can get these books at Louise's Church. You can find them on the streets occasionally when I get out there and pass them out. Uh, but we're reading the book of Joshua, a little story that she's put together. And Joshua, the successor of Moses, the son of Nun, had been a faithful minister to Moses and had learned how to be a leader. He had been Moses' commander. He guarded Moses' tent and position. He and Caleb were the only adult men of the Israelites living to go into the promised land. And why they went into the promised land is because they came back with a good report, not an evil report. Uh, most of the people who went in to spy out the promised land came back saying, oh, there are giants in the land, we'll never be able to take it. But Joshua and Caleb had a more excellent spirit and said, we are well able to take the promised land. So they were allowed to go into the promised land. Uh, so I just wanted to throw that in there. In Deuteronomy 3, he says Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom, and for Moses had laid his hands upon Joshua and transferred the spirit of wisdom onto him. The children of Israel had uh, stayed in Egypt 400 years since Joseph had brought his family's father, father's family to live there. The children of Israel had seen wonderful miracles coming out of Egypt, and after crossing the Red Sea on dry land, they, led, they were led by Moses. They had been in the wilderness on the border of the Promised Land for 40 years because of their disobedience. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Now they had come to the banks of the Jordan River. Just on the other side of the Jordan is the land promised to them. And after the death of Moses, God told Joshua to take the people into the promised land. God told Joshua, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. God said, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. In Joshua 1, 3 through 8, uh, Joshua chapter 1, 3 through 8 of the verses, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. You want to have success, especially here in this last day that we're living in, you need to have the word of God in you. And um, so read your Bible. Read your King James Version of the Bible. Read it out loud. Read it every day. Meditate there in day and night. There are people living in the promised land of Canaan. There are descendants of Ham, the son of Noah. Their sinful acts had to follow the land. God had to wipe out the sinful people in Canaan to keep from spreading the sinful acts, devil worship, and other things that God had said not to do to the people of Israel. <laughs> Does that sound like we're living? You know, there's nothing new under the sun, folks. The thing that is is the thing that will be. The first city they were able to take, take is called Jericho. It is a large city of 750,000 people in it. It was 50 miles from Sodom and Gomorrah, a city that God had already destroyed because of the evil acts that had been done there. The city had high, wide walls around it. After the miracle of crossing the Jordan on dry ground, they, they take the third Passover and circumcise the young man that was born in the wilderness. God says, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt. And today we are circumcised in the heart. Joshua met the captain of the host of the Lord and falls on his face and worships him. And that is a precursor of Jesus. He tells Joshua to take off his shoes and tells them to keep their mouth closed and walk around the city of Jericho until the time comes there to shout. They are not to keep anything from the city for themselves. It's going to be a tithe to the Lord, the first fruit, something that is God's. You cannot take for your own or you will be cursed. And uh, that is the whole Malachi 3, uh, chapter 3, about the tithe, the first fruit. And also you can uh, parallel that to the you know, knowledge of tree, the, the tree in the garden. I said you can eat of every f tree in the garden other than this one tree we tell you not to eat of. And today you can lighten that onto the tithe, the 10% of your, of your first fruits, 10% of your income, 10% of your increase. Uh, and it's so important to, to tithe and, and to give, and give and it shall be given unto you. 
After the first city they came, they kept. Uh, the, uh, after the first city, they can keep what they find. After taking the first city with a shout, the next city was A, AI, and they did not have such a victory. Joshua knew someone had sinned. It was Achan. He had taken some things for himself from Jericho, and it caused a curse of failure to fall on all the people. Joshua had to get rid of the cursed thing, and then the victory came to the people. Achan was a type of Adam. When he sinned, he brought the curse on the others. God had told Joshua to kill their enemy, not to make contact, contracts with them. But some men deceived Joshua, and later Joshua had to pronounce a curse on the people of that town and called Gibeon because of the deception. Another time, God hearkened to the voice of Joshua when he commanded the sun to stand still so that he could win a battle. In the book of Joshua, it tells you of your battles compared to your overcoming Christian life. When you're in a battle against the devil, stay in there until you win. You know what? The devil can only deceive you and trick you into quitting. He can't beat you. You can only beat yourself. And when he does that, it's getting you to move. And so, Gilgal was a place where Joshua and the people always returned to Gilgal as a type of the Word of God. You'd always return to the Word of God. Joshua led Israel to defeat 31 different kings in a period of five years. The Israelites did not con completely conquer all the land. The people who were not destroyed caused the Israelites to sin in years to come. Sin blocked God's blessing from them as it does also today. If there's sin in your life, get it out. Joshua divides the land and gives it to the people. And then he reminds them of the promise of the God. They were to love the Lord God, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto him. To serve him with all their heart and with all their soul. And that's what God is requiring of us today. Be ye therefore courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you turn not aside near from to the right or to the left. They cleave unto the Lord your God. It's Joshua 23, verse 6. Joshua lived to be 110 years. Joshua wrote the book of Joshua. The nation of Israel served God all the days of Joshua, but soon failed to keep their promises and began to fall after other gods. After Joshua, the principal leaders are called judges. And we'll talk about the judges next. Uh, Samuel, well, well, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll just finish this up. Uh, Samuel was a judge in Israel. Now, you know, Bulletin Man's ministry, Jeff Winehouse's ministry is save the lawyers.org and save the judges as well because the judges and the lawyers are, are um, totally deceived nowadays and uh, we need to pray for them. We need to save the lawyers. Samuel was a judge of Israel. Samuel was a very special person. His mother, Hannah, have vowed to give him back to the Lord all the days of his life, and there should no razor touch his head. Uh, if he heard uh, his touch, his hurt head, if he God would give her a son. Hannah poured out her heart before the Lord in prayer, and she rose up the next morning early to worship and to be uh, to worship before the Lord. When the baby was born, she called his name Samuel because I ask of the Lord. The name Samuel means ask of the Lord. She brought him to serve in the tabernacle at Shiloh. At about the age of three, and left him with a priest called Eli. She, as long as he lives, shall belong to the Lord, and he worship the Lord there. His mother made him a little coat and brought it to, to him from year to year, when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Eli was both a judge and a priest. Oh, and if we only had judges today who were ministers and priests, my goodness, what a day of rejoicing that will be. He had sons that were very evil. The child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. God began to speak to Samuel at a very early age, and Samuel was obedient to the voice of God. Uh, you need to be obedient to the voice of God. I need to be obedient to the voice of God. And I'm, I'm not all the time, but I'm, I'm working and striving towards that. And the more you read the Word of God, the more you get the Word of God in you, the more you will be obedient to the Word of God. The child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days, and there was no open vision. Today, uh, where there is no vision, the people perish. And is there a vision? Is there a word for the Lord today? Yes, there is. As both Eli and Samuel were asleep, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel thought it was Eli calling him. The Lord did this three times, and Eli knew that it was the Lord calling Samuel. Eli instructed Samuel to go back and lay down. When the Lord called this time, Samuel said, Speak for thy servant heareth. God spoke to Samuel of the things concerning the house of the Lord, and the Lord revealed himself to Samuel many times as Samuel judged Israel. Samuel was a good judge, and God used him to anoint the first two kings of Israel, Saul and David. Before this book is the Bible story of Abraham, Joseph, and Moses, and I'll get to them here pretty soon. I do appreciate you stopping in and, and looking at this video. 
Uh, he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I do appreciate you stopping in. I wanted to show you Trooper. I don't know if you guys ever watch. Oh my goodness gracious, but this is Trooper. Hey, look how big Trooper has got. Can you see Trooper? If you go back into the videos and look in back in September, actually August 31st, Trooper was born. And uh, Trooper is very special because he was one of seven. And uh, he only made it. They only left pallets and passed on the first 48 hours of their of their birth, but we uh, figured out what the problem was and uh, we're able to uh, nurse Trooper to health and Trooper is a miracle. He is the miracle dog and uh, he's gotten to be a big boy and he's, um, he's part of the family now. So uh, I wanted to show you Trooper. do appreciate you taking it in, stopping in, checking out what the uh, Volusia man's got to say and we're reading uh, out of uh, Miss Louise Latham's books. And you can find them at the Praise Fellowship Uncompromised Word Church, which we're located at 1200 North 5th Street in DeSoto. You can stop by and see us every Sunday at 2 p.m. We do encourage you to stop by and praise the Lord with us. Where the Word of God is preached, uncompromised, without fear. And uh, we love you. Thanks a lot. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.